Oh, hey, good morning. You're watching the breakfast news on Rajya Sabha Television, your one-stop morning show for top stories from India and around the world. My name is Ashwarya Kapoor, and these are the headlines. Industry shares government's optimism on growth rate. As the champ president says, GDP will clock around 7.8 percent and infuse more jobs. Economic survey sees India poised to regain fastest-growing economy tag with 7 to 7.5 percent growth in fiscal year 2019. Resolving problems of farmers, top priority for government, says President Ramnath Kovind in his address to Joint Sitting of Parliament on Thursday of the budget session, adds, Centre working to strengthen economic democracy, usher ease of living for common man. Prime Minister Narendra Modi assures upcoming budget to will fulfill aspirations of all, including farmers, Dalits, tribal communities and labourers, says it will give new energy to country's development. Nation remembers Mahatma Gandhi on his 70th death anniversary. President, Vice President, Prime Minister to pay tributes to the father of the nation shortly at Rajghat. And India sets uh, Pakistan a target of 273 runs for victory in the semi-final of the Under-19 World Cup being played in New Zealand. Shubham Gill scores the century with the final ball of India's innings. In response, Pakistan off to a weak start. Minister Arun Jaitley tabled the economic survey in Parliament on Monday on the first day of the budget session. The economic survey 2018 has estimated that the Indian economy will grow by 7 to 7.5 percent in 2018-19. It pointed out that there has been a 50 percent increase in the number of indirect taxpayers and that demonetization has helped the share of financial savings rise. Sounding bullish on growth, Economic Survey 2018 emphasized India's strong economic fundamentals to state that it is poised to regain the tag of world's fastest growing economy. Elaborating on the points that were working for the Indian economy, the survey said that a series of major reforms undertaken over the past year will allow GDP growth to reach 6.7% this fiscal and will rise to 7 to 7.5% in 2018-19. It also underlined the role of the newly introduced goods and services tax the new Indian Bankruptcy Court, the implementation of the recapitalization package to strengthen the public sector banks, liberalization of FDI and the export uplift from the global recovery as contributing to the economic growth. There is a robust and broad-based revival. I mean, several indicators of activity. We've shown manufacturing growth, GVA growth, even investment, exports, net private transfers, credit, they've all started to pick up. I mean, the direction is very good. The level is still below potential, should keep that in mind. But in terms of directionally, the economy seems to be picking up. The goods and services tax implementation has increased indirect taxpayer base by more than 50%, with 34 lakh businesses coming into the tax net. As on December 2017, there were 9.8 million unique GST registrants, more than the total indirect tax registrants under the old system where many taxpayers were registered under several taxes. The new regime of indirect taxes has also fetched 9.7 lakh crore rupees to the exchequer. GST revenues are growing at about 12% and the buoyancy is well above historical. So for such a early, the early experience of such a transformative change is already providing fairly buoyant revenues. So I think the promise going forward is very good. The countries GST has been GST is GST We have very quickly it. I have in आप देखेंगे कि जीएसटी की रेवेन्यू में काफी बड़ा इंक्रीज आएगा जी कलेक्शन अब बढ़ रहा है जिस प्रकार से रिटर्न्स बढ़ रहे हैं उसी आधार पर जीएसटी का कलेक्शन भी बढ़ रहा है जिस प्रकार से वो किया गया है हम लोग निश्चित रूप से उसको अचीव करेंगे 
Economic Survey 2018 also says demonetization to curb black money has given a boost to financial savings in aggregate household savings with a tilt towards market instruments. It led to 2.8 lakh crore rupees less cash and 3.8 lakh crore less high denomination notes in the Indian economy. The survey highlighted that while services sector is expected to grow at 8.3% in 2018, industrial growth will be at 4.4% and agriculture sector will grow at 2.1%. With strong macroeconomic indicators, the economic survey has set the tone for a bold and reform-oriented budget to be presented on February 1st. The multilateral agencies like the World Bank and IMF have already exuded confidence in India's economic potential. The economic survey has also pointed out that India can be rated as among the best performing economies in the world, with average growth rate in last three years hovering around 4 percentage points, which is higher than global growth rate, and nearly 3 percentage points higher than emerging and developing economies. Reporting from Delhi, what kind of person Vijay Singh? I'm Kriti Mishra for Rajya Sabha Television. And the industry has uh, shared the optimism of the government on growth rate figures. In fact, it has said that the growth rate will exceed government estimates. 6.75% GDP growth is estimated. And next year, 7 to 7.5%. एक अच्छा ग्रोथ है स्पेशली uh, देखते हुए कि चाइना का जो फॉरकास्ट है वो करीब 6.8 परसेंट का है नेक्स्ट ईयर के लिए तो हम 7 टू 7.5 का जो हम एक एस्टीमेट कर रहे हैं जो जो फॉरकास्ट कर रहा है सर्वे वो काफी हेल्दी ग्रोथ है जो तीन साल के आसपास डिमांड थोड़ा स्लो था उससे पहले यूपीए 2 में तो और भी स्लो था तो अब जो है एक एक उम्मीद की किरण जो है इंडस्ट्री के लिए इस इकोनॉमिक सर्वे से uh, the economic survey, uh, 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 as you would see, was, was presented in the parliament, was uh, clearly saying that we are uh, having uh, strong uh, reasons to believe that uh, the, we are on a strong growth path. The Another point which has very clearly come out is that the focus that we will need to give on areas like employment, areas like agriculture, is a very important and we would like to see much more happening, of course, for the rural economy and the agricultural side. And uh, one of the things which is which is seen, uh, uh, which is also talked about, is about the fixed term employment, which has already been, of course, notified. Now, these are, these are, these are far-reaching reforms also in, in, a, in a big way. And the chairman of the Economic Advisory Council to the Prime Minister, Dr. Bibek Debroy, has said that the economic survey is a reflection of government's commitment to growth and development. Highlighting the optimistic outlook of the economy reflected by the economic survey, he said that uh, the emphasis on women's empowerment was a welcome step. Dr. Debroy also endorsed the pickup in growth highlighted in the survey and was of the view that in 2018-19, the real GDP growth rate is likely to be closer to 7.5% rather than 7%. He also said that the impact of any increase in crude prices will be more than compensated by recovery in exports, private investments and even a private consumption unless the real interest rates remain too high. And the economic survey has recommended that the budget should be pragmatic and not aim for extreme fiscal targets. It has also signaled that there are pressures that have to be addressed, such as oil prices in a pre-election year. Let's take a listen. Among the obstacles to growth, the economic survey finds raising investment more significant than raising saving. It also points out that direct tax collections by states are significantly lower than those by counterparts in other federal countries. We see now that there is a robust and broad-based revival. I mean, several indicators of activity. We've shown manufacturing growth, GVA growth, even investment, exports, net private transfers, credit, they've all started to pick up. I mean, the direction is very good. The level is still below potential, should keep that in mind. But in terms of directionally, the economy seems to be picking up quite nicely, quite robustly, and, and, and that's uh, what's happening now. Another key concern, according to the economic survey, is the constant surge in the oil prices. In this regard, it says the first three quarters of 2017-18 oil prices have been 16% greater in dollar terms than in the previous year. In this regard, it calls for policy vigilance in the coming year if high oil prices persist or stock prices correct sharply. 
If oil prices remain at current levels, I think you know, there will be challenges. We know rule of thumb, every $10 increase in the price of oil, GDP growth comes down by about 0.2 to 0.3%. The current account deficit will deteriorate by about, again, 0.4 percentage points of GDP, $10 billion. Inflation will be higher also by about 0.2.3%. So I think we need to watch oil prices very carefully. The Economic Survey 2018 highlights agriculture, education and employment as the focus areas in the medium term. On agriculture, it says that raising farm productivity while strengthening agricultural resilience is a priority area. It pegs agriculture growth in financial year 2018 at 2.1%, while the industry growth for financial year 18 likely to be 4.4%. I think that in some ways, you know, my own view is that the government doesn't have to do anything new and radical, uh, etc. Just, you know, finishing what it has started already would be, I think, a very ambitious and a very fantastic agenda to complete. Supporting agriculture because we know there are stresses in the agricultural sector, which are described in the economic survey. Stabilize the GST. I think that you know, we need to stabilize GST because uh, export refunds, compliance, revenue will still have to be, you know, achieve an equilibrium. On the employment front, the service says that finding good jobs for the young and the increasing workforce, especially for women, is a huge challenge. On education, it says the priority has to be to create an educated and healthy labor force. One of the new things we say in this, which I don't think has been pointed out enough, is that we know that the sex ratio in India is highly skewed. You know, if you go to Punjab, Haryana, you'll see it. Uh, but there is a different and maybe deeper phenomenon of sun preference, which we call sun meta preference. And you can get at that not by looking at the sex ratio at birth, but by looking at the sex ratio of the last child. Is the last child more male than female? And what you find is that in India, it's very striking. You look at the difference with the top two charts. That's the sex ratio. If it's the last child, skewed towards males. If it's not the last child, more females. So it's really quite striking. And that's not true of a country like Indonesia and many, many other countries. According to the survey, policy recipes for the coming year will include a huge support to the agricultural sector, stabilizing GST, privatizing Air India and creating an ecosystem for the new insolvency and bankruptcy process to resolve the bad loan problem in the banking sector. The economic survey says that the government has given utmost priority to social infrastructure like education and health to ensure inclusive and sustainable growth. Even the Swachh Bharat Abhiyan has contributed greatly in improvement of health indicators in rural India. However, child and maternal malnutrition continue to be the most challenging risk factors. Reporting from Delhi, with Kanu Person Vijay Singh, I'm Kriti Mishra for Rajya Sabha Television. And Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said that the budget will give a new energy to the economy, which is already surging ahead. He also hoped that the budget would live up to the expectations of the common man, he said this before uh, the commencement of the budget session. This budget is going to be a new energy in the country. It is going to be a new energy in the country. It is going to be a new energy in the country. It is going to be a new energy in and in breakfast news, time for a very short break. We'll be back with more news. Stay with us. What is GDP? What is fiscal deficit? FDI or GST? What is inflation? Direct taxes and indirect taxes. What is current account deficit? Exchange rate. We'll decode the jargon in our budget class. Only on Rajya Sabha TV.
Thanks for staying with us. Now concerned about frequent elections in one part of the country or another, President Ramnath Kovind in his first address to the joint session of Parliament on Monday stressed for a need to hold just one elections for Lok Sabha and state assemblies. He said that frequent polls adversely impacts the speed of development in the country. बार बार चुनाव होने से मानव संसाधन पर बोझ तो पड़ता ही है आचार संहिता लागू होने से देश की विकास प्रक्रिया भी बाधित होती है इसलिए एक साथ चुनाव कराने के विषय पर चर्चा और संवाद बढ़ना चाहिए तथा सभी राजनीतिक तथा सभी राजनीतिक दलों के बीच सहमति बनाई जानी चाहिए and while addressing the parliament on monday president ramnath kovind also gave special reference to the challenges of a farming sector elaborating the government's various steps he said that the subsequent increase in the production of cereals fruits and vegetables is a result of government policies and the hard work of the farmers किसानों की मुश्किलों का समाधान करना और उनके जीवन को ऊपर उठाना मेरी सरकार की उच्च प्राथमिकता है मेरी सरकार की योजनाएं न केवल किसानों की चिंता कम कर रही हैं बल्कि खेती पर होने वाले उनके खर्च को भी घटा रही हैं सरकार की नीतियों और किसानों की कड़ी मेहनत का ही परिणाम है कि देश में दो मिलियन टन से ज़्यादा खाद्यान्न और लगभग तीन मिलियन टन फलों सब्जियों का रिकॉर्ड उत्पादन हुआ है मेरी कि सरकार किसानों की आय को 2022 तक दोगुना करने के लिए प्रतिबद्ध है किसानों को उनकी पैदावार की उचित कीमत मिल सके इसके लिए देश की कृषि मंडियों को ऑनलाइन जोड़ने का कार्य जारी है दशकों से लंबित निन्यानवे सिंचाई परियोजनाओं को पूरा करने का काम भी प्रगति पर है दलहन और तिलहन क्षेत्र के उत्पादन बोनस के माध्यम से भी सरकार किसानों के हितों की रक्षा कर रही है दालों के लिए बनाई गई नई नीति की वजह से पिछले वर्ष की तुलना में दाल के उत्पादन में अड़तीस प्रतिशत से अधिक की बढ़ोतरी हुई है जो एक रिकॉर्ड है And President Kovind's address uh, also emphasized uh, the government's uh, work in creating employment in the country. He spoke at length about uh, programs like Startup India, Stand Up India, Skill India Mission, Mudra Yojana, providing self-employment to the youth of the country. देश के युवा अपने सपने पूरे कर सकें, स्वरोजगार कर सकें। इसके लिए मेरी सरकार स्टार्टअप इंडिया स्टैंड अप इंडिया स्किल इंडिया मिशन मुद्रा योजना जैसे कार्यक्रम चला रही है युवाओं में आज की औद्योगिक आवश्यकता के अनुसार कौशल विकास करने के लिए हाल ही में मेरी सरकार ने संकल्प और स्ट्राइव नाम की दो योजनाओं को स्वीकृति दी है and president ramnath kovind the lauded the government's fiscal policies over the last 3 years uh, that brought impressive gains for the country despite a global economic uh, slowdown पिछले 3.5 वर्षों में मुद्रा स्फीति की दर करंट अकाउंट डेफिसिट और फिजिकल डेफिसिट औसतन कम हुए हैं वर्ष 2017 में विदेशी मुद्रा भंडार 410 बिलियन अमेरिकी डॉलर के स्तर से ऊपर चला गया मेरी सरकार की प्रभावी नीतियों के कारण प्रत्यक्ष विदेशी निवेश भी पिछले तीन वर्षों के दौरान 36 बिलियन अमेरिकी डॉलर से बढ़कर 60 बिलियन अमेरिकी डॉलर तक पहुंच गया है and the president and the prime minister have appealed to the opposition parties to help pass the bill criminalizing triple talaq in his maiden speech to the parliament's joint sitting the president of the country said that the bill is essential for muslim women to live with dignity and free of fear the prime minister also urged all political parties to pass the bill in rajya sabha President Ramnath Kovind has said that the bill criminalizing triple talaq is essential for Muslim women to lead a life free of fear and with dignity. In his maiden address to the joint sitting of both houses of parliament, President Kovind exuded confidence that the anti-triple talaq bill will soon become a law. Kovind also made it clear that the Narendra Modi government will do everything to empower minorities but not appease them. माननीय सदस्यगण 
मुस्लिम महिलाओं का सम्मान कई दशकों तक राजनैतिक लाभ हानि का बंधक रहा अब इस देश को उन्हें इस स्थिति से मुक्ति दिलाने का अवसर मिला है मेरी सरकार ने तीन तलाक के संबंध में एक विधेयक संसद में प्रस्तुत किया है मैं आशा करता हूं कि संसद शीघ्र ही इसे कानून रूप देगी तीन तलाक पर कानून बनने के बाद मुस्लिम बहन बेटियां भी आत्मसम्मान के साथ भयमुक्त जीवन जी सकेंगे Prime Minister Modi also made a fresh pitch for the early passage of the bill by requesting political parties to pass it in the budget session of parliament. In his address ahead of the budget session, the Prime Minister said that the passage of the bill will be a new year gift to Muslim women. देश के सभी राजनीतिक दलों को विनम्र आग्रह करता हूं कि इस सत्र में तीन तलाक महिलाओं के विशेष करके मुस्लिम महिलाओं के हक की रक्षा करने वाले इस निर्णय को हम सब पारित करें और 2018 के नए वर्ष की एक उत्तम भेंट सौगात हमारी मुस्लिम महिलाओं को हम दें द मुस्लिम विमेन प्रोटेक्शन ऑफ राइट्स ऑन मैरिज बिल 2017 वाज पास्ड बाय लोकसभा ड्यूरिंग द विंटर सेशन इट इज नाउ अवेटिंग पैसेज इन द राज्यसभा कांग्रेस एंड सेवरल अदर ओपोजिशन पार्टीज आर डिमांडिंग दैट द बिल बी सेंट टू अ सेलेक्ट कमेटी ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट राज्यसभा टीवी and the indian parliamentary group uh, headed by lok sabha speaker sumitra mahajan has uh, decided to confer outstanding parliament uh, awards on five members of parliament Najma Abdullah will be awarded for the year 2013. The then Rajya Sabha MP and a former Union Minister, Najma Abdullah, is currently the Governor of Manipur. For 2014, uh, BJP's uh, Lok Sabha MP Hukum Dev Narayan Yadav will be given the award. Leader of the opposition in Rajya Sabha Ghulam Nabi Azad has been named outstanding parliamentarian for 2015. For 2016 Lok Sabha member from TMC Dinesh Trivedi will be given the award. And for 2017 uh, BJD's uh, Lok Sabha MP Bharat Ruhari Mahatab has been named outstanding parliamentarian. and we'll take another short break up next we have all the international and sports news stay tuned tales that inspire stories of social change a salute to diversity promoting public discourse events that motivate inspiring the innovative spirit watch rajya sabha television documentaries Welcome back. Uh, the nation is uh, paying homage to the father of the nation, Mahatma Gandhi, on his 70th death anniversary today. An inter-religious prayer will be held at a Gandhi Samadhi at Raj Ghat in a short while from now. President Ramnath Govind, Vice President M Venkaiah Naidu, and Prime Minister Narendra Modi, along with leaders from different political parties, will pay tributes to Bapu. Prime Minister Modi and Vice President uh, M Venkaiah Naidu will also attend the Sarva Dharma Prarthana Sabha. in the evening at gandhi smriti it was uh, here at uh, gandhi smriti on 30th of january 1948 that the father of the nation was a uh, shot dead while on his way for evening prayers president ramnath kovin the tweeted uh, this morning we gratefully remember mahatma gandhi and uh, the countless freedom fighters who sacrificed their all for our independence Vice President M Venkaiah Naidu and Prime Minister Narendra Modi also paid tributes to the father of the nation in their tweet messages.
And Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu has said that uh, sports has a very basic and prominent role for a healthy individual as well as a nation. He said this uh, while conferring uh, the Badminton Association of India's Lifetime Achievement Award to legendary Prakash Padukone on Monday at a function in New Delhi. At the event, Prakash Padukone stressed uh, that only appropriate sports system can produce good players. Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu revealed that he's a staunch lover of badminton and it is sports which keeps him fit at this age. He termed Prakash Padukone as his badminton idol and said that habit of sports is necessary to create a healthy and wealthy nation. Bharatiya Samskriti jisko hum kaite hai puratan paddhati humara poro jano jiya aur diya virasat mein humko mila. Wo paddhati aisa hai pratiba puraskar. जहाँ प्रतिभा है वो प्रतिभा को पहचान के उसको पुरस्कार करना। Wherever there is some talent and merit, you have to identify it, you have to promote it, you have to respect it, and also you have to facilitate. Why this facilitation? What is it Prakash Padukone ji is going to get by this award or little reward, whatever we have given to him? It is the facilitation is to give inspiration to others so that they also work hard and become something in life. Legendary player and winner of many championships, Padma Shri, Prakash Padukone said that help and support of government, sports ministry and sports authority in India is very crucial for building players for the country. He stressed that more talent needs to be tapped, especially in small towns and cities, by creating an appropriate system. Apart from my talent and hard work, good wishes and encouragement from all my well-wishers have also played a major role in whatever success I have achieved over the years. I would also like to remember with gratitude the support given by the BAI and my state association, the Karnataka Badminton Association at that time, in spite of having limited resources in those days. 1983 World Championship medalist Prakash Padukone was conferred with BAI Lifetime Achievement Award on Monday. The Mysore-born Padukone had won gold medals at the 1978 Commonwealth Games and at the All England Championships in 1980. This is Panchan Mishra's report for Rajya Sabha TV. Let's get you all the sporting action now. And India has set Pakistan a target of 273 runs for victory in the semi-final of the Under-19 World Cup in New Zealand's Christchurch. Elected to bat first after winning the toss, India made 272 runs for the loss of nine wickets in their stipulated 50 overs. Shubham Gill scored 102 runs in 94 balls, while Prithvi Shaw made 41 and Manjoot Kalra contributed with 47 runs. For Pakistan, Shaheen Afridi took three wickets. In reply, Pakistan got off to a poor start. They are a 34 for four when reports last came in. And winner of today's semi-final will meet Australia in the final of the World Cup. An ace Indian badminton players, Asaina Neval and defending champion PV Sindhu will start their campaign at the Indian Open Badminton Tournament in New Delhi. The event will also feature 2014 champion Kidambi Srikanth beginning his new season after missing last week's Indonesian Masters. Fourth seeded uh, Saina Neval will face uh, Denmark's uh, Sophie Dahl in the opening round, while PV Sindhu will begin her campaign against uh, Denmark's uh, Natalia Rode. Srikanth will play against Hong Kong's Lee Chuk Yu. And Republic Day celebrations came uh, to a close with a beating retreat ceremony in New Delhi. President Ramnath Kovin, Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu, Prime Minister Narendra Modi, Defence Minister Nirmala Sitaraman, and chiefs of uh, three services witnessed the ceremony. We'll leave you with the colorful visuals uh, as we take your leave. Thanks for watching.